Hi, I'm Veronica Statch. Welcome to Shalom World's original program, Jesus My Savior, where we give you moving conversion journeys from all over the world. Our guest was born Catholic, but was so only by name. For years, she was lukewarm in her faith, but little by little, Jesus drew her deeper. A software engineer in Hong Kong, our guest now knows her savior. Let us welcome Mina Liu. My life before God uh, was that I was born Catholic. Usually to me, born Catholics are just a bunch of kids who follow the fathers and mothers to Mars, don't enjoy it, and come back home and continue to play. So that was me. Uh, I was drawing in masses. I was not listening to what the priest was saying. I was basically the same as other kids. But things changed when I entered secondary school. I entered a good school and people around me are really bright. So I started to question myself and my self-esteem became really, really low. I was also um, facing a teacher who was very strict and harsh and I was the monitress that time. I put a lot of uh, expectations and burdens onto myself, but I let her down. I also let my parents down. I let myself down. And there were times that were too dark that I thought, I'm not good enough to live in this world. Things changed when I started to prepare for my university entrance exam. There were a lot of miraculous things that happened afterwards, and including finding some Bible booklets in a rubbish bin, including miraculously getting healed for some diseases, including being almost dead in a traffic accident and God was always protecting me throughout my life. Hello Mina, it's so lovely to have you here on Jesus My Savior. Hello, hello Veronica. So Mina, I know that even though you grew up Catholic and you even went to a Catholic school, you didn't feel a particular connection to the Catholic faith. What was your understanding of, of Jesus during this time? So yeah, I was a born Catholic. Uh, my mom is not uh, religious and my dad and my two younger sisters are. Um, I think when I was small, I didn't understand what the Bible was talking about. I only understand the stories and um, some teachings like love the others, but I didn't live it out. And um, yeah, I was an angry kid at that time, very jealous of my two sisters. Um, I fought with them often and I hated them. And I wrote in my diaries as well that I would never, ever play with them again. Um, yeah, because I was jealous that they got my mother's attention and, um, yeah, and, and that I was left alone. So I know that you didn't quite feel at home with, with your teachers and, you know, your, your classmates. What was your experience of, of primary and secondary school? I'd say that I also tried to uh, refute others about my religious beliefs. Although I was in a Catholic school, not all my classmates were Catholics or, or religious. Um, but uh, when there are like uh, religious religion lessons, then uh, I would I would be snobbish, I think, and then I would tell them that I know this, I know that, and then they shouldn't say this about me. They shouldn't say this about this religion, and they should just believe in it if they are so good. And yeah, so I was not living out any of the spirit's 
at all. Since uh, I went on secondary school, things change a lot. Uh, I was no longer the, the brightest student in the class, no longer the teacher's pet. And I faced a lot of pressure from my teachers and my parents as well, because uh, my mom is like a tiger mom. So she has lots of expectations on me. She wants me to do uh, Chinese exercise, English exercise, mathematics exercise, and also all kinds of exercises every day after school. And uh, I have to do my homework and also do those exercises and also revise for my tests tomorrow. And I didn't have the time. Plus, I have to go to bed at 9 p.m., I think. So I couldn't juggle all these. Uh, while reading my favorite novels and she asked me to ditch my novels because that's a waste of time and she also thinks that I'm lazy when I'm revising for my own tests or having my own study method. I felt she didn't trust me and I also felt that I was micro-controlled, micromanaged by her. Um, so the situation, our relationship went, uh, became hostile. I think it lasted for many years until it was uh, my high school examination. So uh, at that time, we had a cold war for three months and I didn't talk to her. She didn't talk to me. We were living under the same roof, but we just walked past each other by like strangers. So I know that when you were preparing for a university entrance exam, you stumbled across the power of prayer, and this really changed your life. Can you just share with us how this came to be and um, what you discovered? Yeah, so during my preparation for the university entrance exam, uh, yeah, that was during the study leave period. So we were allowed to study at home for two months uh, at our own pace. and. That time was actually my most glorious time and happiest time ever because uh, I was able to study at my own pace. I got up early in the morning, I do yoga every day and I have a tight schedule and I followed it. But uh, I didn't talk to mom those days because we're still in the Cold War. And But it, it served the purpose so I was able to do uh, and use my own study method. But uh, one day as I was uh, trying to work on some maths exercises, I usually go through the recycle, uh, recycle bin to search for recy uh, recycled paper. And uh, that day I saw a little booklet in that recycle bin. And I thought, who throw away books? Like I didn't accept that at all. It's totally unacceptable to throw away books. I love books. So I thought, I would get that book and I would read it. And yeah, it turns out that book is a daily Bible verse booklet uh, of the year before. So uh, I start to read it. And that was during during the first series of exams, my aura exam. Um, so I was really nervous because that was the first exams. And I really want to get it right. So I was in a new examination centre, a new school, uh, strangers around me. And I looked at all the candidates in the examination centre and thought to myself, these are all my enemies. They are my competitors who will be in the same group with me for the discussion. And I was nervous. And then I flipped over that book. I brought it with me because I thought I'd had some time. And it was talking about how you should love your neighbours like yourself and also love your enemies. And that enlightened me. So I thought, yeah, they're actually not my enemies. They're my neighbours. And they're actually the victims under the examination system. <laughs> so uh, I, I was kind to them. I smiled to myself in the mirror and I walked into the examination room. And I was very kind and generous uh, to everyone. I showed them, I, I helped them when they started and I give them ideas when they, when they ran out of them. So yeah, after the examination, I felt really, really good. And of course I performed really well after the examination. So I kept reading that book. <laughs> and uh, after reading it daily, it sort of changes my mind. A lot, actually. So 
I realized that I, yeah, we, we shouldn't be accumulating wealth. We shouldn't be accumulating um, power or, or kinds of other materialistic things on this earth. What we should do is, is to do good and love others because in that way you that's it's more sustainable and that's the way of life and i started to donate half of my possessions to charity started to volunteer a lot and i even founded some art shops after secondary school to uh, upcycle some um some used uh, daily commodities like uh, bags, pencil cases, and then all the money that I've got would be donated to charity. And I felt immense joy when I was doing that. And I also started going back to church. So after going back to church, the first thing I did was uh, to do a confession. So I listed all my sins starting from childhood all the sins that I remember, all the guilty feelings that I have in my heart. I listed things about uh, how I, how I uh, got along with my sisters and how, I, how my relationship was with my mom. And I hold the list and went into the confession room. And I sobbed after the second line. I couldn't go on. It was too much for my heart and I was crying but I, I stumbled and I yeah I finished it at last and the father told me that um, you could go out and read uh, say the rosary 10 times and that would be like the compensation so I went out and I felt totally relieved and after saying the rosary for 10 times tears stream down my face again but it is different it's it's a yeah it's like having some stones plucked out of your heart and the water gushed out of it it's it's that feeling so yeah I felt that the con confession is actually a shower for the soul indeed um after that, I went to university and I thought um, the first thing I do is to join a Catholic society. So you mentioned this Catholic community. What is it that attracted you to this Catholic community and, and how did they uh, help you grow in your faith? I joined it without knowing that after 1.5 years, it's actually bringing me to have confirmation. I didn't know that. Some people joined that because of the confirmation. And I didn't know. I just joined. And during those 1.5 years, I learned a lot about my faith. And some misconceptions that I had, they were cleared. And I had some companions uh, with me on this journey. And most importantly, I was exposed to the Eucharist. And one day, uh, the, the classmates, of the catechism class they're actually my tutors as well they said uh, we're going to a eucharistic center and would you want uh, would you like to join me so i joined them and i went inside it was and i saw how they looked at jesus adoringly i felt moved and i also tried to calm down and also enjoy the peace and looked at the bread in front of me. I, I thought to myself, it's just a bread, but I didn't know that it's actually Jesus in it. And I felt something miraculous that time. I had some sort of imagery popped up in my mind. It is about uh, a crystal heart being, um, yeah, with some sticky and gluey crude oil like material stuck on its surface. But when it's just when it's immersed in some yeah crystal clear water, all those crude oil, disgusting material, all dissolved, and yeah, without a trace. And later on, I realized that that was not water that the heart was dipped in. It was actually blood, 
and it's Jesus blood and I wrote this imagery down and I thought immense peace inside of me I thought wow this is amazing and after I went home because I was writing that on paper and after I went home I was rereading that and I wanted to share share it with my friends but I was, but then I thought that it was very very weird why am I doing this and I, I suddenly have the urge to answer myself in Jesus voice as well and I thought no 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 let's not do it and I didn't do that I was too scared but the next time I went to adore the Eucharist I also have the urge to write something down and I remember the teachings from catechism class so uh, they say try to open your heart and no matter what comes in your mind just write that down and yeah expect nothing and be still like water so I tried okay I open my heart and then still nothing is coming yet and I, I waited patiently and then if there are some inspirations I'll write that down slowly and I start to have some wise sayings wise words in my mind and I wrote them down so this time it was about some other different things and I asked Jesus questions and after that I waited a bit and I got some answers so I, I kept on doing that every time I adore the Eucharist and I started this habit of writing the diary it's like going on to a retreat to a mountain where there is peace and where it's away from all the hustles and bustles of life and I didn't want to go down the hill and every time I close the book and uh, step outside of the Eucharistic Center it's like going back to reality and try to bring what you learned to life. Uh, now I know that that during this time Jesus really gave you the gift of some really deep and beautiful revelation. Can you please share uh, some of those revelations with us that Jesus revealed to you? So uh, what I got from Jesus are something really wise and patient and amazing. So examples like, um, so I once asked Jesus what love is. Um, and then Jesus answered me, love is to give unconditionally. And how to love unconditionally. So it's like a teapot. A teapot would uh, pour hot water into other cups without hoping to get anything back. But as it pours hot water out of it, then the hot water boiler would refill it with really hot water again. And so the teapot would always stay warm and it could warm other cups as well. But if the teapot is uh, calculating and thinks that uh, no, maybe I'll not do this, maybe I'll not give anymore, then the water would be accumulating inside and it will go cold and it couldn't warm other cups and it itself, its heart becomes cold as well and the hot water boiler wouldn't be able to refill hot water into it. And I thought, wow, this is so wise. And I once asked Jesus um, about gratitude and I was thanking him for saving my life in Nepal because at uh, that time I nearly died in a traffic accident. So yeah, a motorcycle went full speed at me and nearly killed me. But very, very luckily that the precision of that angle, God saved me. and. So, so the motorcycle hit my mo uh, hit my bike at the back with an angle that is only causing me to fall over. And after I fall over, I, 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 I stood up without any scratches on my hand. And very luckily, the car uh, behind me didn't crash over to me. So, yeah, I was truly, truly lucky. So I was thanking God for that, and I was imagining how how worse it could have been and God told me 
you don't have to enlarge your imagination just to feel lucky and grateful. Uh, gratefulness is like gratitude. It's like um, it's like every morning you drink a cup of water, and you imagine that you're drinking a cup of golden light in your body. And once it penetrates through your body and through your eyes as well, everything you see will be contaminated with this golden light and everything would be blissful. And in this way, you find bliss, you find, you find gratitude everywhere in your life. Um, once I also asked God, because I was worrying about the future and about uh, relationships, friendships, and family. And he told me that uh, I don't need to be afraid. And love is just like a desert. So as you're walking barefoot on it, you see your own footprints at this moment. And you don't know what the desert or the, or the sand dunes would be like in the future because they change constantly. And you can't plan ahead for the future. And you also can't look back at the past because the footprints will be gone soon. So love is at this moment. It's always at this moment. And grasp this moment to love and, and love everyone around you. Love like there is no tomorrow. And all oh, these are amazing teachings I learned from my diary. And yeah, that was such a blissful, blissful time. I really want to know why, why is Jesus your savior? Why is Jesus my savior? Because he's real and I've experienced it, experienced him all the time. And it's not that I believe he exists. I also believe my wholeheartedly that no matter what happens, he will make the best arrangements for me. You know, thank you so much for just giving us a glimpse into how beautifully and intricately, um, you know, Jesus has pursued your heart and how he's romanced it. And you painted us such a beautiful picture of just the love he has for you, but also every single one of us. Um, he doesn't call us to a life of lukewarmness. Um, like your story shows, but he calls us to a life of greatness. So thank you so much for inspiring us to live out our faith with more fervor. And thank you for tuning in today. Catch us on our next feature of Jesus, My Savior, here on Shalom World. I'm Veronica Statch, your host. God bless you. searching for answers? Discover your true identity. Stay tuned to Shalom World.